production software that I use on and off in my studio. If you follow my streams, then you know that I go back and forth between Serato Studio and Ableton Live when it comes to just making production and just creating random fun ideas. Um, there are a lot of things inside of Serato Studio that I have not touched on yet that I feel like we need to do an update video on. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to hop in Serato Studio and look at a couple of features that I think are pretty crucial inside of the software and talk a little bit more. So let's hop into it. So we got Serato Studio open here. And when you open Serato Studio up, this is what it looks like. It gives you the option to create a new beat or a new remix. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on new beat. We're going to do a new beat. So you've got three main windows. One window is going to be your waveform. So this is going to be where all your waveforms are going to show up. If you're doing any plugins, which we'll get to, that's going to show up here in this left side. On your right side, it's really going to be your sequencer window. So this is going to be where you add instruments or samples and you sequence them. So if you look here, I can punch in a sequence for drums. So we have a little sequence for drums, and you're probably wondering where the hell did this drum kick come from? Let's check that out. So right below the sequencer, which is in this tire window, but this top part is the sequencer of this instrument. I can minimize that instrument, and it'll just show you the waveform you created with that sequence. And then solo or mute as well, all on this track right here. Below that, you're going to have an add instrument, add drums, add sample. So these are the options you can pick from. I can add a instrument. I'll show you how to get to that. So down at the bottom, this window right here is going to show you a couple of different things. Right now, it is on our main layout for our scenes. Okay. Every time you make a group of sequences, you create a scene. So right now, I just have drums in this first scene. I can create a second scene when I'm finished creating this drum. I feel like I need to add another section, like a B section or a hook, chorus, verse, whatever build up. I can add those in these different scenes down here. When I'm done adding scenes, so let's see, I just added the second scene. It says scene two. I can drag those scenes down here, and this will play all of the scenes in sequence. So let's say this first scene I have the drums. The second scene I want to add instruments. So I, I clicked add instrument, and you see this deck one popped up. And it's saying on the left side, drop instrument here. So if I go down here to library, this right here is going to be our navigation for... Things like instruments, things like tracks, your Serato library, drums, samples, effects, all that good stuff is going to be down here. So right now I'm in the instruments little tab. I can add some pads now. Let's say intro. There's no pad, right? No pad on the intro. Scene two, that's where our pad is. So we see down here is where our instruments are. If we click the song view tab, it goes back to our song view, which will show us our intro, which shows us our scene two. And then if I hit play down here, it's going to play through that sequence of scenes. I can also loop this sequence, so I can loop it with this loop button, and it'll keep going back and forth between these scenes. If I want to add more scenes and add more sections inside of the scenes, I would click each one of these guys. I can copy this scene, or I can copy this scene and add to them. The other cool thing is that if you play live instruments or you want to scratch or anything like that, right below the scenes is add audio. If I click add audio, that's going to give me the option to either record and right up at the top here in this bar, it's going to show you what input you're going to have. So if you have an audio interface with two inputs, four inputs, it should show all those inputs. You have a monitoring, an input monitor switch right here, so that way you can you can hear it. If your audio interface doesn't have input monitoring on its own, you can click this and it'll play through. So right now I have a handy dandy OP1 hooked up, and what we're going to do is capture something from this OP1. Okay. 
So now we captured that audio down there called the OP1, and I could rename it. I could put OP1 below your audio track. So this is the audio I recorded. Pretty low. I could probably boost the game, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I can find sections of the audio that I want to add chops to. So that just gives me the option to find different sections. Down at the bottom here, you have this master tracker here. If you click on that, this shows you everything that is going to be playing through your master track. So all of your scenes, all of your audio is going to show up as this master track here. And you can always export that master track as a song, you can export it as a wave, or you can click here and it's going to give you all of your stems to export. So adding audio is one of those major things for me. It was a thing that I didn't even know you could do. You can add pretty much whatever you want. So if we're back in here and we want to get out of this window here, we're going to go back to the top of here and we're going to click back to scenes. This is going to get us back into our main window where we're going to have our instruments, we're going to have our little scenes here. All right, so one thing that I think is really cool now that I didn't pay attention to when I first uh, started looking into Serato Studio was that you can use third-party VSTs. And we're going to look at adding third-party VSTs into Serato Sample and where we can actually add them. So let's check that out. <laughs> We are in the vocal sample that I just recorded. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this vocal sample and we're going to go up to the top. We're going to go to effects. So just below where we could put our little slices are these little effects areas, little areas, little drop downs where you can add effects. So I can click on any of these built in Serato effects. But let's say I want to add a plugin. We're going to add Handy Dandy Little Alter Boy to this vocal recording that I just added. And you can see down here, it's highlighted because it's on. If you click it, you, you can turn it off. So now, when we go back to song view, we have our vocal sample in there that we just recorded through our microphone, and we have a little Alter Boy plugin. So you can add different plugins to these little drop downs by just going to your plugins folder, finding the plugin you want, and then dragging it onto that audio or that drop down. Same thing with scenes. So if we're in a instrument, so if we're on this drum instrument right here. I want to add an effect. Let's go to this dreamy pad right here, and then let's add this chorus June 6 to it. And now, oh, you know what? We're in the wrong scene. So now we have this chorus June effect added to this track. So you can add VSTs, plugins, you can add effects, plugins, third-party plugins to Serato sample now, and it's pretty easy to do. One of the other things that I've found that you could do in Serato is adding automation. So how much of an effect or how much volume, how much how much of the different parameters that you want inside of each instrument, you can do that. If you go up here to the top right, you click on this little robot, it's going to give you the option to add different automation to each one of these parameters in this drop down menu. You could do by bar sequence like this, or you can do by line drawing it in so you get more of a smoother fade rather than a straight cut. And that's by clicking that top right corner, that little robot head that's up there. So in song view, you have the same option, top right hand corner, you click on the little robot head and it gives you your automation in each piece of audio or in your scenes. <laughs> So those are some of the features that I thought really popped out at me after using it for a while that I wasn't paying attention to 
when I first started using the software. Like, if you want to make your sets unique and make your own edits, this is a perfect software for you to kind of, you know, create your own identity as a DJ or producer. So definitely hop in there. Check out Serato Studio. Hop into some of the streams I do on Mondays. Every Monday, 6 o'clock, Mountain Standard Time, we make beats and we talk about things and I give away a lot of software. Serato was one of the softwares I was giving away. Maybe I'll do some more giveaways. Come pop in, drop a comment, let me know what you think. That's going to be it for today's Music Gear Monday. Let me know what you think of Serato Studio. Have you been using it? Have you checked it out? Are there some things in there that you are enjoying? Are there some things in there that you hate? Let me know. Slap it in the comments below. 